When I started in business about 34 years ago, yes, I do sleep in formaldehyde, and, and uh, there were only two C titles. Uh, and all of, a lot of you look maybe too young to remember or, or know that, but there were only, in, in most major companies, there was a CEO and a CFO. All right, that was it. So that was about 1980, 81. Uh, in fact, when we launched a company called Lotus, uh, a software company, it was just a CEO and a CFO and then a chief yoga instructor, which was Mitch Kapoor. But um, anyway, uh, quickly, I had moved to Boston because for some reason I couldn't get my Bostonian wife to stay in Cleveland, where, I, where I, I'm from, and uh, especially after the river caught on fire in Cleveland. Uh, yes, you can Google that. And uh, anyway, I, all of a sudden there was... CEOs and CFOs out here, but there was all of a sudden this like sort of explosion of a title called MIS. Does anybody remember that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Manager of Information Services, all right? And guess what happened? Over the course of the 80s, those people bought so many computers and so much software that everything was a mess. And so guess what? A no C title came in when it was a CTO. And guess what? Nobody could manage the CTO, so they got COOs, Chief Operating Officers. And, you know, I, I was just curious. I went to, uh, it was uh, digital equipment at the time, was a big client, and I wanted to know what a COO did. And it looked like the exact same job description as the CEO and the CFO. So you started to get these rash of C titles. The 1990s brought, if any of you started your career in the 90s, that was what I call the funky C titles, all right? And that was where we had things like chief relationship officer or chief human officer or chief strategy officer, blah, blah, blah. So, but now you come into the 2000s and you head toward 2005, six, and you have CMO is the fastest growing title in the world right now. And so if you deduce from what I just said, it's obvious that every time we screw up any part of business, we just throw a C title you know, uh, onto that and to try to straighten it out. The, um, the other context I wanted to give you was sort of the, the view of technology and that to me is, we're in the fourth wave of technology, and I think that's important for marketers to understand that we're still in a computing environment. It's just that we don't call it computing that much because we have so many multiple devices that are connected uh, and et cetera. But we are in the year, in the age of anywhere, always on, as you can tell. We're moving quickly to a visual paradigm. Whether you like it or not, text is not going to be very popular in the next five to 10 years. We're going to be highly visualized, video-based. Right. Um, you're going to have, again, uh, wearable computing, which will be in this fourth wave as well. We're already starting to see the, I played with Google Glass the other week. It was sort of interesting. Um, you know, and I can see where that's Gonna, gonna head and where that's gonna go, especially from a marketing perspective. So you look at the landscape, then you look at, I don't know if, by the way, I don't think they're gonna fight that long. But um, I think you have other elements that are happening in marketing and I just wanted to at least name them for you because these are sort of my 10 things that are in the upcoming book. Uh, obviously, big data and analytics, I think it's way overhyped. I, uh, I think it's last year's news. Right. I think where we're headed is in, into insights that are immediate, that come out of that data and analytics. All right, And we have so much data, how do you get to that? analytics and the insights as quickly as possible. That's going to be done more and more through software. All right, and we're going to you know, work through that. By the way, that would be number two, I would say, is you need to understand the landscape of software and market automation. You do not have to be developers. 
I, I don't think, but I do think we have to understand what Eloqua is doing, why Oracle bought them. I think we need to know what is good, bad, and different about Marketo. I think we need to know about HubSpot and can they even scale to a bigger size, you know, or is inbound going to stay in small, you know, types of communities, things like that. But you have to understand the landscape of marketing automation, which I think is extremely important. So data analytics, insights, software, marketing automation. And then I like to say that there's almost a new solar system of marketing that's happening. And the sun is the customer. And if anybody's been reading Forrester lately, I, you know, I think they've been good to stay relevant. Everything's about customer experience. You know? And I'll give you one example, because probably the greatest company right now, and I'm sorry, it's a consumer um, example, but it's a perfect example of what the future of marketing is about. All right? And that's Amazon. How many have bought on Amazon the past week? Almost everybody in the room. All right, so you're going to say, Larry, get a life here. All right, I um, got a permission-based email from Amazon about a year and a half ago, and it was just the time they were starting to post videos of authors, um, and you could watch them interview or talk about their books and things like that. So uh, they had said, we know you like uh, Mr. Updike and because uh, you had bought some of his books. Well, we are posting some rare footage of him reading from his rabbit series, uh, you know, and uh, thought you'd be interested in it, your friends at Amazon, okay? So I go, okay, and I made a drink a few weeks later, and I went and sat down in the library, and I go on Amazon, and uh, I, you know, roamed around for a little bit so they know where I, where I was going. I watched those videos. They were very good. I realized that there was a new video of an, a great American writer I like named William Faulkner, and uh, they actually had a video of him his Nobel Prize winning uh, 1949, I believe, uh, acceptance speech for the Nobel Prize in Literature. Remember that little fact, William Faulkner, and I looked, watched that video. Just remember that, all right? And then I went and I read some reviews. In fact, there were two reviews that hated my book at the time, and I was really pissed. And um, <laughs> And then I also had just read Malcolm, my, my friend Malcolm Gladwell's new book. It was called like The Dog Saw or something or Dog Ate. And I just said, how could you write The Tipping Point uh, for the fourth time? And uh, so I read some reviews. I wrote some reviews. I bought 11 books. All right. So I spent about $190 on books, some for my family, some for clients, things like that. And that was about it, all in all, about an hour and a half. So what happened? What did Amazon get from me besides $190? Amazon got my likes, my dislikes. I actually participated in the community. I was engaged. I had an experience I actually enjoyed, all right? And they got information. Two weeks later, I go back on Amazon, and what's the first thing on the, sl on the, uh, on the screen? Would you like $5 off the up-and-coming biography of William Faulkner? <laughs> sure, yeah, I want that, you know? So perfect example, at least, of how we're starting to combine earn social content, commerce, all right, kind of thing. So probably tip number three or tip number four combined is how are we as marketers going to make these experiences, whether we're selling tractors at John Deere, you know, or books on Amazon, how are we going to create these experiences that attract people, all right, engage them, and make them want to buy on a regular basis? That's going to have a lot of technology involved. And again, I don't think we have to understand the technology, all right, but I do think we have to understand the landscape and the impact of what it's doing. The last piece of context I'd give you is that when I started in business, IT was considered competitive advantage. All right, so technology people were considered competitive advantage in what they did for a company. In the last 30 years, they have become basically the garage monkeys of the company. 
all right? And I argue that what the CIOs and the CTOs are going to do is they're going to be living in two worlds. The first world I would call the internal world, which we don't really have to worry about that much. And that's the security stuff and make sure everything's running and people are bringing their devices from home and those are integrating with devices at work, you know. And And the second part, so that's, you know, all the semantics and all those kinds of software companies, right? You know, finance, financial software, process software, uh, business improvement software. That's all going to stay and that's all going to be part. But the huge, fastest growing area is going to be the external technology that's used for customer experience. And guess who the CEOs are going to go to to drive that? I do not believe it's going to be the CIO. I believe it's the CMO. I think they're going to be buying more and more software, technology. All right. And I think you're going to see a convergence of that external use of technology reporting in to the CMO, all right? And what's going to happen is we're going to live in a world, all right, where the CMO says to the CIO, or whatever the new titles come in, mark my word, there'll be new titles, all right? But it's going to be, it's going to say, here's what I want to do with my customers. Here's what I want to do to get closer to them. Here's the kind of experience I want to give them, all right? Help me find the right technology to do that. Then you're going to have things like contextuality and tools that are going to be extremely important. All right, I'll tell you a story and then I'll go to the next slide. Uh, another story. I was uh, on a uh, panel uh, with uh, the founder of uh, Starbucks. What's his name? Howard uh, Schultz. Uh, what an interesting guy. And I'm, of course, addicted to his coffee. And um, after the panel, he said, uh, would you be one of our uh, guinea pigs for a test, a marketing test uh, that uh, we're going to have? And I said, sure. And I forgot about it. I didn't hear anything. And about two weeks later, I get an email from somebody in Starbucks marketing. And they said, would you fill out this sort of little survey monkey type thing? And so I filled out, you know, it was only like five, six questions. But it was like, when you do get a drink, what time of day do you go in? What's your favorite drink? I said I like iced espresso. If you order any kind of food, what kind of food do you order? I told them what I order. And if you travel, where do you travel mostly to? I said to my, you know, the offices and my company gave that. And then I forgot about it. So about two months later than after that, I'm in London and I had my middle daughter with me. And uh, we woke up at the hotel, we were going to go to the Olympics for the day, and all of a sudden I get a text from Starbucks, and it said, hi Larry, would you come into the Starbucks in front of you at 323 Kensington High Street for your free espresso, iced espresso, and half off your breakfast sandwich. Now my daughter thought that was a little scary, because she said, that sounds like how drones work. But, you know... But I, I said, this is the coolest thing. And I went in, and there, I'm in another country, and I get my free espresso. Now, why I said the t contextual thing is marketers are going to have to figure out, what if they offered me a free herbal tea, and I hate herbal tea? Now you're going to hurt my relationship, right? Because you don't really know me. So this combination of understanding the data, the context, the time and place, the experience, this is all, again, more and more of an integration of technology and marketing-specific things. I think every analyst firm, Forrester, Gartner, Ovum in the UK, I think every one of them is saying that marketing execs will be spending the most money on technology-related products by 2017. All right. So 
that kind of movement, that kind of change, all right, is going to have huge impacts on what we're doing. Marketing will have the support of the CEO, so the CIO must develop a strong relationship with the CMO. I think it's going to be critical. And the CEO, right, they are there to run the company, but they're there to make the customers happy. Therefore, what is who's the executive that's going to be under the most pressure, in my opinion? That's the chief marketing officer. And then you're going to have the whole back, the, the old part of marketing, right? How much earned did you use? How much social do you use? How much paid media do you use? By the way, I believe paid media is going to become subservient to earned media. It's still going to be important, but it's going to be pointing people to digital destinations through commercials, through other paid type search, you know, kinds of things. So I think that we have to, you know, watch for that. I still don't understand. I've been saying this since I co-founded MyTex. Why we still spend this year? We'll spend two hundred billion dollars in this country on television advertising. I don't get it. So when we have the Q and A, if anybody wants to help, you know, you know, fill me in on why we are spending two hundred billion dollars. My three kids are twenty three, twenty one, and seventeen. The only type time they watch an ad is when they're watching a sports game with me, because I'm too lazy to tape the. I want to see it live but I'm also too lazy to tape it. Though Jeffrey, my youngest, has figured out how to tape it just for 17 seconds and miss all the ads. There's something, something he figured out, you know, uh, you know, kind of thing. I do think that you'll see CIOs, and it might bifurcate. This is one, you know, and I, I guess it doesn't matter, right? But the CIO role might bifurcate into those two groups that I was talking about. You might have that sort of internal infrastructure type of CIO, and that might report into an operations kind of uh, thing. And then you're going to have that CIO that's in charge of technologies and marketing automation and software that's impacting the customer's experience, all right? And how you aggregate content and how you actually can get quickly, by the way, and I was telling an old colleague of mine before this, I said, what is going to come back, which everybody should be happy about, is once we get this all sort of figured out, creativity is going to come back in a big way. So how to be more creative about the contents that's created, how to be more creative about connecting and engaging with customers. All right. So creativity is going to be big time. All right. And not silly creativity, you know, not like the Budweiser ad or whatever. I mean, that, that'll always be around. But, you know, I'm talking about content creativity, connectivity creativity, and engagement creativity. All right. Long term, the CMO and CIO must come together to deliver a clear vision and timetables. We've got to get clarity about this. The problem with the last 30 years of technology is it confuses everyone. All right. The, you know, all the different changes in computing, all the different changes in software, all right, it, it, it tends to you know, confuse us that are trying to go direct to our customer. We have to understand that technology is our slave, all right? It is not in charge of us, all right? It is there to be used so that we can have competitive advantage and we can win. So people are in charge, not technology, all right? And how that's going to work with us to actually help us, you know, automate the marketing process, I think is extremely important. You know, how are we going to, you know, get this to be sort of a happy marriage along the way? Um, I think CMOs must tell CIOs how marketing can benefit from sort of technology innovations. I think it's less about IT's former role of just listening to vendors bring technology to them, but trying to be a little more innovative and creative about how to use some of the, you know, available software and technology. And by the way, it is software. All right, I, I, I want to keep coming back to how important that is in our lives. And every company will be a software company. Every company will be a software company, no matter if they make cars or no matter if they make Pringles. All right, they're going to become software companies. All right, and that's one great thing about America. We lead in software development and creativity. So uh, 
CAOs must participate in discussions about overall marketing strategy and objectives. It really needs to be discussed at the highest levels. Right? What is our strategy to get closer to our customer? And uh, how are we going to do that in different countries, in different cities, in different localities? How are we going to use technology in experiential ways so that in physical places, so that you're experiencing something physical with a brand, you also can carry that through in a digital manner? You should agree on mutual focus areas, customer strategies, metrics. We're going to have so many more metrics. One great thing about the uh, advertising industry the last 50 years is they were really good at measuring themselves. Now, measuring yourself is sort of an interesting concept, but you know, they were very good at coming up with their own terminology. I mean, think of the CPM. I mean, how brilliant. And everybody just went, yes, CPM. All right, well, when are we going to have the cost per engagement? When are we going to have the cost per share? You know, when are we going to get into that kind of measurement so that we can measure all right, the content and the new marketing and the kinds of work that I'm talking about? And I think it's going to take some kind of consortium to do that. Somebody to, much like the four A's were in the madman days. Um, there's going to take some kind of consortium for this to do that. Um, build strategy around the company's future stakeholders and demonstrate value you know, to key stakeholders. Two things I think are critical for the future of marketers have nothing to do with technology. You can probably use some technology. But I'm amazed how many people do not do complex constituency mapping and then overlay influencer mapping. Constituency mapping. Influencer mapping. Good example of constituency mapping, our client Kaiser Permanente has 38 constituencies they think are extremely important. From types of physicians, to the government, to payors, to patients, to nurses. So those complex constituency maps are increasingly important. Then what do I mean by overlaying an influencer map? Who are the three most important bloggers to that constituency? All right, there's an influencer. By the way, I think blogging is going to be extremely more important in the future, not less important, as it self-edits. So you're going to have just two or three important bloggers in a specific micro-segmented community. Do think about questions, too, and I'll, I'll gladly also answer questions about things like second generation social <coughs> media, since that was one of my gigs. I think I had some examples um, that I thought was worth showing. I talked to you about. My personal example of Amazon, I think there's really three companies, and they all begin with A right now, that are setting the really fourth wave of computing and marketing trends. That is Amazon and their use of data. It's just unbelievable and uh, what they're doing. And now he owns 70% of the cloud, which is just you know, astounding. If our government knew that one, <laughs> you know. But uh, the, the second A company is Apple. I think the most important launch in the last 20 years will be the next uh, uh, iPhone. I think it's going to be huge with what supposedly the capabilities it's going to have in it, uh, especially from advanced voice uh, and uh, the video capability and the battery life. Uh, I think we need to really look at what that's about. And the last company you probably haven't heard of, it begins with A2. It's from Cambridge, England, and it's called Arm. And it's the intel of this generation. And to understand how the, what they're putting in their design chips, and they're even talking about putting relationship, you know, customer relationship management software in the chips so that it's, it's starting to manage with your device and making these things really marketing software smart. So you're going to start to see stuff like that. I don't mean to sound like George Jetson. So. But uh, Papaginos, another great example of using you know, analytics to gain more visibility into their loyalty programs. So I think no, I'm on probably number seven or eight in my 10 essential things you need to know. Another thing you need to really understand is the future of digital loyalty and couponing, how that's going to work. My guess is, is the companies like Papaginos 
whether their pizza's good or not, I, mean, I guess you still have to have good pizza. But you know, the, the, the idea that I don't want to take care of my loyalty stuff. You do that, and I'll love you more. Just make sure I can take my phone, and I can order that pizza, and I get the free one. I don't even have to know that there's a free offer. All right? I want you to make sure that that's organized for me, the customer. And I think that's what you're going to see much more of all right, in the loyalty couponing world as these things start to collide and, again, integrate. And I do believe that that metaphor I was telling you about the so new solar system, all these are little planets right now whipping around the customer, big data, analytics, marketing automation, software, uh, you know, loyalty, couponing, uh, you know, uh, data and analytics, I said, but they're all, they're gonna crash into one another, they're gonna become one planet together, some are gonna disappear, a lot are gonna go under the hood, and you're gonna, again, see this rise, you know, and, see more and more, again, in the, in the mobile device space and increasing frequency. In the financial services area, I've been very impressed with this company, Ing, and what they're doing in their customer relationships. Uh, and you should uh, really, you know, maybe go spend some time on their site. But the CIO and CMO teams rescheduled emotional reactions, and they were trying to all right, so here's where now we're getting back into old, combining old-fashioned marketing with new marketing, right? Where they were getting more emotive things based on the data that they were getting so that they could, you know, see the customers felt more emotions during the loan or mortgage process, you know? So they wanted to figure out how to make, those, make that easier and they impacted customer service. So now that would probably be one of my last tips to you on the 10 new skills is really understand where customer service is going in marketing and automation and communications. Because I believe the CMO is gonna be responsible for customer service as well. So now you have CMOs in charge of the customer relationship and that's gonna have how many different, different uh, ways that are communicated with those customers. Whether it be a very first to try to get you interested in the company or its products to buying, to loyalty, to service, all right, to knowledge, all right, the whole storytelling and, 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 and so forth.